What's up, y'all? It's BV6G. I'm back here with the Prelude. I know it's been a while, but I'm excited to show off this engine setup. I will make a video soon on everything else going on. But either way, this video is catered to my engine setup. I have a dyno schedule tomorrow. I'm expecting big power. Of course, you always got to hope for big power. But either way, I wanted to document and show everything I've done to this because I feel like I have maximized this entire setup, pretty much everything you can do. So let's just get into it. So it is a lot to explain. This is very Frankenstein setup. I have H series, F series, and K series parts in this. So it's it's a lot to explain. And sometimes it's hard to explain to people. You know, they ask me what's done to it. And I'm like, ah, oh, God, I don't even know where to start, literally. So be the way. So this is a F20B motor. F20B came in Accords from Japan. They are a 2.0 stock, however, this is a stroker setup. So I have a F23A crankshaft and rods in here. So now it's a 2.3 liter. The F23 has the most stroke out of any H and F series, even more than the H23. So this will make the most torque out of any other setup. So this is F20B block. This is bored to 86 millimeters, by the way. F20B block, 86 millimeters. F23 crankshaft and rods. On top of that, I have K20A2 pistons, which are from a RSX Type S, K20 pistons. Um, stock head gasket, these pistons would be almost 12 to one compression. However, I did get a thicker head gasket. I did originally kind of intend for this to be boosted someday. So when I built this, I did gap the rings for boost and I got the thicker head gasket. So now it's down to 11.3 compression. That's what this setup is, 11.3 with the K20 pistons and F23 crank. This is an H22A head, P13 H22 head, it is an older one. However, this is fully ported. I feel like this is <laughs> to the limits of what of H22 can get ported to. I'll show some pictures because whoever did it was absolutely insane on the port. It does have Ferreira valves on all 16. It also has plus one millimeter intake valves. So really beefy intake ported head and I do have skunk 2 tuner 2 cams so not pro series or anything but only the hardware is what gives it away really otherwise if I told people it was stock they would probably look right here and not even question it so I have skunk 2 tuner 2 cams ported head fully built valve train so it has Ferrero valves all around but I do have Brian Crower springs and steel retainers. I prefer the steel retainers. So Brian Crower stuff. And that's pretty much it for the internals. So again, F20B block, F23 crankshaft and rods, K20 A2 pistons, and H22 head with cams. So I guess time to move on to the bolt-ons. I feel like I've done everything possible you can to bolt onto this. But I guess we can start with the intake. So this is custom piping. I made myself um, Air Raid makes a DIY kit and you can look that up. This is 3.5 inch piping. So <laughs> that's why it looks pretty beefy, but it's 3.5. Going on to the throttle body. This is a Skunk 2 Pro Series. This is a 74 millimeter throttle body. So 74 millimeters, pretty beefy as well. I didn't want to go too big though, but I mean, that's the biggest they make that's compatible with the stock intake. So going on to that, this is an OEM intake manifold for an H22. However, this one is fully ported. So it is a fully ported manifold. You can gut these and port these. Um, this one's ported pretty decently, so nothing crazy, but it is ported really good. And I am double stacking spacers. Of course they're ported as well, but um, that's about two inches. I know Roscoe Racing makes a single billet piece, but this is the DIY way to do it. So ported intake manifold, double stack spacers, 74 millimeter throttle body, 3.5 inch piping. I do have Bosch 550cc injectors. Um, these are OEM for a Mustang GT500 actually, but I trust Bosch and I've had these almost four to five years and they have never given me issues. However, on the stroker setup, even the 550cc's are just all motor. Believe it or not, these are at almost 85 duty cycle so <laughs> I'm maxing out 550 cc's on a all-motor car which is crazy but that's pretty much for the intake yeah just 550 cc injectors AM fuel rail stuff like that oh yeah so my coil and plug set this is by snake tuning real cool guys there 
This has been working really well for me. This is their mini Dizzy. So I'll, you probably heard of Digi Dizzy. There's, you know, Honda, Coil Unplug, Burton Racing. This is Snake Tuning's mini Dizzy. So it is an independent unit. Uh, you can get rid of the stock distributor. This is independent. Everything is built into this. Um, I just had to use an adapter harness just for my car, but certain cars you don't need an adapter harness. But either way, it works really good for me. I rev to almost 9,000 RPM. I've taken this on road trips. This has worked really good. These are just K20 coils. I went with OEM Denso. So yeah, this coil and plug kit has been working really well for me and I've had no issues from it. But either way, that's pretty much all the bolt-ons. Oh yeah, so let's go to the exhaust actually. So this is a PLM Tri-Y header. Really good header, all tubular. I did modify this because the collectors on these, they claim 2.5 inches. However, it's a little bit smaller. So I can kind of show you, please, God, don't judge my welds. I welded this myself. I'm not gonna go too close. But, um, so the header, you can kind of see where I cut it. I gradually did it from 2.5, that's this first section, to 2.75. Yes, I know it's ugly, but either way, to 2.75 to three inches. I do have a full three inch exhaust on this car. So three inch from that flange all the way back. So there's no restriction whatsoever on this car. And that's pretty much it for bolt-ons. That was my intake, exhaust, my internals. It's actually pretty simple. It's very streetable, drivable, um, and it's been really fun. Also, I do want to make a huge disclaimer that I am not getting the car tuned. I'm simply putting it on a dyno on my own street tune that I've done to this over the years. You know, I've always just kind of fixed it up for whatever motor setup or intake or just whatever, every change that I've made. So this is going to be running my tune. The actual tuner is not making any changes or, you know, helping out or increasing the horsepower. So, you know, before I go out there, I do need to make that clear. So I'm not essentially maxing out this setup because obviously if a professional tuned it, he'd be able to get more out of this than I can, admittedly. But either way, this is going to be on my street tune. So whatever it is, you know, <laughs> hopefully, um, you know, it's a lot, but, you know, you never know when you get a dyno. But this is just my street tune, so let's go see what my tune puts out. So there it was, the car went on the dyno successfully. <laughs> Nothing went wrong. I drove it an hour there, an hour back. And you know, I revved it to almost 9,000 RPM. And this thing did really good, actually. Um, so on my own street tune, like I said, I need to make that very clear. This is my tune. I did not get this setup maxed out by a tuner. Um, but obviously, as you see, I made 236 to the wheels. It is a hub dyno, um, but yeah, I did make 236 to the wheels or the hubs, I guess you could say. And I think 175 pound feet of torque that it maxed out at. Uh, the power band is pretty cool. Um, I noticed obviously all the powers after VTEC. My VTEC hits at about 5,100, but I guess if you could see by the graph, at about 6,000 RPM, it's already over 200 wheel horsepower. So from 6,000 RPM to 8,500 RPM is an almost 40 wheel horsepower 
you know, increase. So between six and eight K is 40 wheel horsepower. I don't know why I just, I think that's pretty good. Cause especially when you shift these, these have longer kind of gears. So, you know, you shift that even 8,500, you land right at 6,000 pretty much. So and that's just pretty good to know. Cause you got to think you can't always, you know, look at your dyno just from the numbers itself. It's important to look at the graph as a whole, see where you're making power, where you're making torque, and you know if it drops off or anything like that so that's kind of why i bring up you know at six thousand i'm already at over 200 wheel and then from there on up it goes you know higher and higher all the way up to almost 240 so i think that's pretty good um so and to mention the tuner did um mention to me some restrictions i might have surprisingly i thought you know like i said before that i maxed out this setup but he actually told me because of the big displacement this has an even larger stroke than H23. The big displacement with, you know, the pistons and everything, he could tell by the vacuum that my intake manifold is actually restrictive, uh, just to a small extent. But because the vacuum was, I think, like dropping at higher RPM, it just shows him based on, you know, his professional experience that even though this manifold is ported, that, um, maybe it's not ported enough or i just need a bigger manifold so he could tell um he doesn't think it's the throttle body that's a 74 that should be perfectly fine but just based on the vacuum the intake manifold is probably a little restrictive uh it, or even for the high rpm power it would actually be wiser to delete both spacers because uh, for higher rpm uh, a smaller intake manifold is actually better for higher rpm so this obviously probably helped my torque a little bit, but you know, it kind of did not help my heart, high RPM, the double stack spacers, but still did pretty good. And I'm very happy with it actually. So I revved it almost at 9,000 RPM. Realistically, um, bec mainly because of the intake manifold, um, it was actually dropping off on power at about 8,500 or right below that, I think. So, Obviously, I'm going to go turbo, so I didn't want to get him to tune it. You know, obviously, that would have been a big cost if I'm just going turbo anyways. So I just wanted to get a baseline of what this is pushing before I make some major changes. And obviously, because I didn't get it tuned, um, I did have my laptop in there just to give him some data. But, you know, he did take a look at my maps. And, you know, of course, him being a professional he could see that, you know, there probably was some room for improvement, maybe on the timing, the fueling, everything like that. So he did give me some pointers. Um, super cool guy. I definitely recommend H car tuning in San Antonio, Texas. He is, you know, very professional and knows what he's doing. But yeah, he did, you know, see some areas of improvement. So if he actually tuned this, spent some time on it, if I fixed the intake setup a little bit, this would easily be over 250 because I'm sure... You know, especially I have a standalone knock detection system in my car or a knock mic, better to say. Um, he could definitely spend some time with it on the dyno and squeeze a bunch more horsepower out of it. So, um, you know, it's only <laughs> what 14 away from 14 wheel horsepower away from 250. So I think he could get that if if I decided to keep this on motor. But obviously I'm not. I have a turbo kit now. So but either way, that's how it is that is the setup and i hope you guys like the video i'll be back with some more updates on my car and the turbo project so thank you guys for watching if you made it this far you're definitely a real one so definitely show some love and i appreciate you guys for watching this thanks